everyone. It's uh, Trisha from East Marsh Acres. Uh, long time no see. Uh, we've had a wonderful Christmas season with our kids and uh, but now it's January and it's time to plan the garden. So um, one of my Christmas gifts from uh, we exchange gifts trade names and so on. Uh, I got a gift certificate to where I buy seeds or I have buy, bought seeds before <clears throat> and that's a place called Revival Seeds and they are in um, Nova Scotia um, but they have all heritage um, seeds and non-GMO um, uh, organic practices so um, <clears throat> I've used their seeds uh, last year and did, they did wonderful. So I ordered more seeds um, through them. So that's what came in the mail this week. So now I get to plan my garden. Um, I'll just show you some of the seeds that um, uh, I got. Um, so here's a bunch of um, just a bunch of uh, herbs that I'm going to plant. So hopefully we're going to be building some herb gardens behind the house and so then they'll be close to the house so that I can get at them. Um, so that's some of the thumbs. Um, a new one is called Celeriac. Celer Celeriac. It's basically like a carrot, a parsnip, a celery. It's a root but it tastes like celery, so it's great in um, soups and, and so on for that. Um, I'm gonna try this new one called a Wonderberry. So it's in the same category, they're putting it as tomatoes, eggplants, and peppers. So this will probably go into the high tunnel. So if you didn't know, we, in the fall, we built a high tunnel. <clears throat> And that's where our chickens are in right now, um, fertilizing the soil. We've got a bunch of straw in there and we moved the chicken coop around. And so we're getting a lot of chicken squat all over, um, fertilizing that area of the ground. And uh, so we hope to um, be planting in there. Um, what we do want to plant in that high tunnel is stuff like tomatoes, um, green peppers, uh, cucumbers and eggplant and then now this wonderberry um, so it's sort of like it's sort of like a it looks like a it looks like a blueberry but it's probably more like a tomato kind of thing so we're gonna we're gonna try and see what it is and if we like it um, I also got some watermelon seeds this time last year I thought about the watermelon seeds in too late, couldn't get seeds. So um, bought them this time because our squashes did so well last year. So I want to be able to, to have some watermelons. So I've got some ones that are little watermelons that will, will ripen faster and be available sooner in the summer and then some bigger watermelons for later on in the summer. So I'm looking forward to doing that. Of course, we've got eggplants peppers, cucumbers, I like the um, English type cucumbers and, sli and a slicing cucumber, so I have those. Um, I'm not too much into pickling, I did that a couple years ago. I still have some pickles, so I don't think I will need to get some pickles this year, um, so I won't be planting any. So here's some um, <clears throat> Golden California Wonder Pepper, which is a you know, long-standing type of pepper, long fellow cucumber. Then I have um, some carrots, and I do have some carrots left over from last year. As you can see, my seed bucket <laughs> is full. And um, so I have a bunch of carrots, and we're still doing carrots. I'm actually going to be 
processing some carrots today because I, we've been we've been uh, storing them and I'll have another video on how I store my carrots and what I do with my carrots so stay tuned for that um, so we're gonna have lots of hopefully get lots of, of carrots this year again um, uh, onions leeks uh, I was reading, I was looking at a video and they say to plant these around your cabbages and your kale and so on like that and it keeps down on the pests so I think I'm going to try that. I have that I've done a listing of companion planting. Um, so what to plant with what that goes well because um, some plants can give shade to other plants that are growing underneath and um, <clears throat> and some plants they just don't go well together I guess um, whatever uh, th so they you shouldn't plant them next to each other because they are not good for whatever they spread to each other or whatever so I have some a companion list and I've done that before which has worked out really well so we have some zucchini the cabbages and I've got one more type of tomatoes um, as well. Um, I've got a whole bunch of lettuces still, spinach, radishes, um, and beans. And then I saved a lot of our beans for our seeds and I also saved um, a lot of our tomato seeds as you can see. So I have um, San Marzano seeds that I saved, some Roma seeds, and some Paul Robeson, oh those are delicious and they're kind of those dark big tomatoes. Um, some zebra tomatoes are great slicing tomatoes and uh, what's this one? Oh these are these are peppers, these are red peppers, uh, red and green peppers. So I have red peppers and then I ordered green peppers. So um, that's all in there and I've got a bunch of squash that I save squash, butternut squash, uh, buttercup squash, spaghetti squash, even though that's not what actually came up in the garden. I didn't get a lot of butternut squash. So I think I got the buttercup squash and I got these green ones that are kind of like acorn ones. So I'm gonna, I have still some in the cold storage, so I'm gonna keep some of the seed for that and we'll see what we get this year. <laughs> It's always great. Squashes are, are wonderful anyways, no matter what they are. You can roast them and put them in a soup and they're just delicious either way. So some are a little bit more spicier, some are sweet and so on. So uh, we did really well with the squashes, so I hope to do it. So what I'm doing now is I'm trying to, I start a lot of seeds. I started that last year. I started seeds indoors and when I get to that seed sardines part, I will have another video on how I start the seeds. But right now we're just doing the planting part. So I have to start seeds indoors and some are just sown outdoors. So I want to kind of organize things. Um, so I've got to look at, there's a couple things that you have to look at. So the seeds on the back, they'll tell you on the back, um, start seeds six to eight weeks before the last frost. So you have to know what your last frost date is in your area. Um, we are usually around May 24 weekend and that's usually what it's sometimes earlier but you never know and I always kind of wait for the May 24 weekend um, in there to actually plant um, stuff out and then you're pretty safe. They say it may be earlier about May 10th this year but I'm still not going to rely on that for the ones that are going to be outdoors. Our high tunnel ones uh, we will be planting earlier because we can. It's in a high tunnel. Okay so the frost is not going to be affected, uh, affected um, as much. So we hope to be starting <coughs> planting in the early part of May, like the beginning of May, um, in the high tunnel. And uh, Maybe we'll even do it earlier. We'll have to see. But we, we have to start the beds. We have to, there's a lot of work to actually get the bed started in there. So we'll see how that goes in April and when we can do it. So I'm going to go back from those dates 
and you know go six to eight weeks back and that's when I'll start my seeds. So I'll go in my, my calendar and I will write down when I should be starting each of these seeds. Now so many seeds have different ways. Some are you plant you know just on the top, um, some you sow quarter inch deep, some you have to cold stratify the seeds, some you have to soak the seeds. So I have a little, a little, um, uh, yeah, kind of a glossary here of all these, all the different instructions. So I don't have to write them all out at once. So what I have, um, so here's the, this, this, so this is my seed order and it's got a picture of the, the seeds and so on. So that's all my seeds and then some that I have in my box as well. Um, so for instance, the cabbage, four to five weeks before frost. And then my A says, sow it a quarter inch deep, and then I'll transplant it into three to four inch pots. So after that they, so I'll kind of just broadcast them on the soil and then see what comes up. And then I will transplant them into larger, um, cell, um, pots. Uh, and put them under the lights because um, then I don't have to move them so much and you don't know if you just put them right away into your um, you know your three to four inch cells you may not get a plant in that one so or you could put them in there and put three or four seeds in there and see what comes up and then um, cull from there and take the best one so you could do it that way too so I've got different ways of um, so another one, so some of the, some you sow a half inch deep, some you, um, put into one inch cells that I'm doing. So I've got the different timelines. Um, I've got the outdoor ones and so on. So I will look at all that information and again, count down when we want to plant it, when they should be ready. Um, <clears throat> And yeah, that's how I'm going to do it. The next thing I want to do, so once the seeds are growing, but I want to know where I'm going to be putting them. So I have in here, um, I have a little map of these of our gardens. So our gardens, we have right now, last year and the year before, we made two, um, they're 50 feet long, and they're 40 feet wide. Um, so these two are 50 feet long, 40 feet wide. And now we have the high tunnel. So in our 50, so we basically have five rows of 50 feet in the two gardens. And we have, we will have three rows of 30 feet in our high tunnel maybe 25, because we want to have a little bit of a staging area by the door here. And uh, so, and why three? It's because um, the high tunnel, so we want to plant tomatoes, cucumbers, um, uh, what else is there? Green peppers and so on. And they do really well when they actually grow upwards and they can be tied up, okay? So we had really good success in our garden um, having um, strings across and then putting a string up to those or actually we had pipes across and then strings up to there and then the tomatoes and the cucumbers went up there. So it keeps them off the ground, keeps them more pest free and so on. So now the high tunnel has a middle um, bar and it has two side bars. So I figure three rows are what we'll do. Um, then we can use those bars to put the the strings that the plants will hang on. Um, so we're hoping that that will um, will work. We're always going to try new things. So now I'm going to try, uh, I'll plan out our garden. Um, I'll work on this. It's kind of boring while I'm thinking and doing this, but because um, I'll look at, so if you can see, last year and the year before I just kind of went over but so this is the same two 
rows. So I write in there when and where they are, what's going planting, and so on. Um, and then when we have to go and plant, then we know where they are and what we're going to do in each of them and when we're going to plant them out. So, um, as you can see, we didn't plant last year till May the 30th. Um, yeah. Or is this the year before? I don't know. But what I want to do is we also uh, rotate crops. So I don't want to plant the same thing in the same area um, because um, certain plants will deplete the soil a little bit more than other plants. Some will leave good nitrogen in the, in the plants, in the soil, for other plants to do well the next year. So I like to um, rotate the nitrogen ones, which are beans, um, and so that other plants can also do well with them. Also the carrots I like to have um, so that we're going to make sure that they can grow deep enough this year. We've got kind of stumpy carrots, but some, I actually looking at it now, they didn't do too, too bad. Um, so in order for us to prepare our beds as well too, we are going to get, uh, we're doing the lasagna method because we didn't have very good soil. So now we've got two years of soil build up. So every year we put, we've got straw over there now, we've got a, uh, a tarp over there like a, a black garden um, type tarp and so the straw in the spring when the sun is out actually it's nice and sunny today uh, will actually um, start breaking down that straw and so what we do is we get compost or last year we got triple mix and compost and we put that on top and as another layer and then we just plant into there and they do really really well so um, we're still eating carrots from it, we're still eating um, potatoes, still got onions, we've got um, the tomatoes that I put away, we still got beans, we still have spinach, we still have kale. Um, yeah, we, we are doing well with our food sources this winter, especially with all the high prices of vegetables and so on. Yeah, our meals can get a little bit boring sometimes with those types of things but hey that's what we have and that's what we're going to be eating in season um, so really in the grocery stores right now we're we're um, buying dairy products and meat and that's kind of what we're everything else we're kind of doing uh, uh, yeah from the garden um, we hope to start some micro greens very soon and we'll keep that going and also we're going to um, try to grow some fodder for the chickens as well too so before i have to start this i'm going to try that um, with our um, light system downstairs which i'll show you in another video so um, i'm gonna turn you off right now bring you back when i've got my plan and i'll show you what i'm doing with where i'm planting what in our gardens so i hope they found that um, helpful and informative about how to plan your garden or how you can do it. Um, what I didn't show you, I should have done. Look at all the flowers I've got this year. So I'm really going crazy with the flowers. I love the sunflowers. I love flowers. My dad loved flowers. I love putting together bouquets. So if I can put bouquets throughout the summer and the fall together for me and other people, um, that just makes me happy. Um, so if, uh, yeah, I've got a lot of flowers and obviously with the new house, we are going to be doing a lot of landscaping and we'll keep you up to date on how we're doing that landscaping, um, in the spring. So, uh, we will, so let me get back to you and I'll show you my plan. Hello again, I'm back. Um, yes, I've been doing some preparation. So as you can see, that blank um, garden map is now filled in. <laughs> so um, yeah, I'm changing things around. 
So, um, just to let you see a little bit, um, I'm going to do it from this angle here so you can see it. So my top one over here, I'm doing asparagus and strawberries. Now that will be a perennial row that will continue to grow each year. But I'm going to start that this year. So that's kind of why I'm starting at the end. Because then that could possibly um, get bigger over time. Then I've got squash and sunflowers. They did really well last year together. Um, watermelons. Um, again, squash and sunflowers and zucchinis. So they're going to be all here. So those are kind of all vining things. The sunflowers will grow up. The vines will go underneath them. Sometimes the vines might climb up the sunflowers. Um, I've got some rhubarb that was given to me, and hopefully it will come back, and some mahi plants, or lovage, they call it. Um, and hopefully they'll come back. Otherwise, I'm starting some rhubarb seeds. In this row here, I'm going to have lettuce, spinach, and celerac and radishes and then onions in between and then this row we're going to have the beans and those are going to be pole beans so they were a couple rows over before and that's where the tomatoes were um, in the other one um, we're going to have all flowers here so look really nice flowers in there because here we're going to kind of have a seating area when we're doing our gardening. Hopefully we will build a pergola for some shade there. Then we're gonna have some potatoes here. We're gonna have some carrots here. We're gonna have cabbages uh, down here and then onions um, along the cabbages on either side probably. Um, they say that the onions are gonna be good for keeping pests down. And then again, we're gonna have kale, we'll probably have red onions here, white onions here. We've already got garlic planted here. Um, for the high tunnel, we're going to have tomatoes and wonderberry, just a little bit, and tomatoes on either side. Then in the middle, we're going to have the cucumber, eggplant, and peppers, and these are all going to grow up. Underneath, we're going to have some leek and green onions in the middle as well, too. And, um, and then around the tomatoes, we're going to have nasturtiums. So they're supposed to be good for uh, pest control for tomatoes in your greenhouse as well too so hopefully that will will work and that's my garden plan for 2023 actually should put the date the year because that other garden plant I plan I didn't put the year on so I have no idea what it was for but anyways, here's my calendar. So it looks like I'm going to be starting seeds um, around March the 6th. And that's about two weeks before I did last year, which was mid-March, because we're going to do the high tunnel. So a lot of the high tunnel ones I'm going to be starting here. Then I'm going to be starting some early um, flowers and then the high tunnel flowers as well too. Then there's some more high tunnel uh, ones as well too, and sweet peas, which is a, they like cooler weather. So I'm gonna start the seeds there. Then we're gonna get into um, more of the flowers again that are going to go outside, but they're gonna take about eight weeks to start. Um, then I've got even, I'm gonna order compost and soil. Um, because we have to, we have to start, um, yeah, start our beds and so on. I want to have everything ready, um, because we may not be delivered as soon as I'd like. Then we've got another, we've got here, I'm going to start all my herbs and here I'm going to start zucchinis and cabbages. And then here. Oh, that's so that's all my seeds starting and as things get a little warmer towards May I can start transferring some of this um, 
some of these plants that are started indoors, I have a little tiny outdoor greenhouse to harden them off before um, they're planted out. So hopefully they can transition to that as well. Otherwise, I'm not going to have enough room downstairs as well. So yeah, I've got also preparing the garden beds on that weekend of May the 6th. Um, and then hopefully in the big garden, we can plant the stuff that's underneath the ground. So frost isn't going to be an issue. So we've got sunflowers, squash, watermelons, and the spinach. These watermelons that I'm going to start from seed, I'm also going to start watermelons in the uh, in, indoors as well too and see which ones work the best. And then the next week we're going to plant the onions and potatoes. And I'm going to make outdoor uh, flower pots and then the rest of the planting of the outdoors. So it's kind of spread out, which is great um, because of the hot house or the hoop house, high tunnel, greenhouse, whatever you want to call it, is kind of um, going a little bit ahead. So then everything doesn't have to be done at once. Um, yeah, so I think I've got the plan in place and we'll let you know how it goes. Um, so yes, I will be, um, I'll show you a video of my seed starting and uh, so that should be interesting um, uh, that will be later on then in March but um, yeah stay tuned um, we still have more videos to um, that will be coming up about processing the winter carrots and what's happening to um, all the rest of our stuff that we put up um, I can show you our cold storage and how that is coping uh, with this winter weather. So thanks for watching. Hope this was helpful and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye for now.